Hey everybody, welcome back to Prime 5, your 5 biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. And we have some really good ones today, including Nintendo doing something really interesting with Nintendo Switch Online, which could impact the future of the service in a good way for all of us. We also have a game dev speaking out against console wars. It's always nice to hear this from somebody who actually makes games, not just video game fans. Oh, and hey, sparks of hope and more. Woo! It's gonna be a lit one today. Let's get into the news. And our first story deals with Nintendo Switch Online because the latest edition, Pilotwing 64, is running at 60 FPS. Now this matters because Pilotwing 64 never ran at 60 FPS on the original Nintendo 64. Back then, a lot of timing in things in N64 games were actually based on frames, so jumping to 60 FPS is typically not as simple as it may seem when you know, you're emulating games and all of that. This does make you wonder if they will go back and start to patch 60 FPS into the rest of the Nintendo 64 online library, which should indeed be a value add to the service. I would love to see this. 60 FPS is a smoother way to experience games. And you know what? If they're going to do this for the NSO, it makes you wonder if Nintendo will start emphasizing 60 FPS in their own games moving forward. Next up, Platinum Games has some glowing words about Nintendo that make it sound like the company is going to keep working extremely close with the big N. And this comes from an interview over at Video Game Chronicle about Nier Automata brought to Switch. And Video Game Chronicle asked the team at Platinum Games, you already have a strong history of partnering with Nintendo. Could Yamane's appointment bring that relationship even closer? For context, Yamane's a new hire, a new promotion. He's a former Nintendo employee of a couple decades. Inaba said, well, obviously, Yamane didn't leave Nintendo on bad terms at all. And this partnership that we have with Nintendo is very important to us right now and will be moving forward. I think with Yamane san joining us here, Platinum Games can definitely build an even stronger relationship with Nintendo moving forward. That can only be a positive thing for Platinum Games. So yeah, we're pretty glad to have him on board. And look, this is naturally really good. We know that Bayonetta 3, Astral Chain, Star Fox Zero, and other games, a wonderful 101, they've worked together on many projects and or Nintendo has just hired them for many projects. And I don't see that changing. Near Autumn obviously being the most recent thing to come over makes you wonder if Platinum Games and Nintendo are going to keep making really, really sweet, loving games together because, oh boy, do they seem to sell really well on Switch. Next up, we get to talk about a game developer talking about console wars and how stupid it is, and he really addresses it from the developer side before giving a very generalized point for us consumers, and we're talking about a new video by Modern Vintage Gamer. He's a game developer who has made games for Sony, Xbox, and Switch, usually dealing in the classic library, bringing games like Quake to new platforms, but what's really interesting are the things he had to say about all of the platforms from a development standpoint in his attempt to tell people to stop giving a crap about console wars. He says, Nintendo Switch is excellent for gaming from a development perspective for newer developers because it's a great starting point. He calls the Switch's development tools great which hasn't always been the case with prior Nintendo systems. He said PlayStation 5 is fun to develop for because of the power it brings to the table. And before he talks about Xbox, he noted that gamers argue over teraflops. And he says in actual game dev, none of the developers even know what a teraflop is. It has nothing to do with actually making games. He says the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series trade off areas of more power in different aspects, which is fun to develop around. He does say for Microsoft, what's neat is they do have one SDK for both Xbox One and Xbox Series X, so you use the same compiler and dev tools for both systems, allowing for easier cross-generational development. He says there is a different learning curve for Xbox, however, because it is the only platform of the three major ones that uses DirectX 12. In the end, he notes people shouldn't care about console wars. Competition is good for the market, and companies making moves and arguing over legal semantics or buyouts, copying ideas, reacting to another platform's success is how an industry moves forward. Steam Deck is good to get some attention to help push Nintendo. Xbox pushing game services is going to get Sony and others to do something too that's going to lead to the best possible service and features we can make. Hardware le leading in one way or another, portable, under TV, streaming to phones. All of this breeds competition, which breeds lack of stagnancy in the market. And as many people point out, 
Look, fanboys exist for everything, but unless you're being paid by the company to pretty much never say anything negative, it's okay to admit that these companies are really self-serving and you know what? Maybe you really enjoy their products. It doesn't make them perfect. It also doesn't mean other people enjoying other products is a bad thing either. I've always said console warring is stupid. It's fun to talk about sales differences and power differences. I like the conversation. I don't like the actual idea of fighting about it. A brand new trailer has dropped for Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, and they're calling this a launch trailer. A little weird, we usually don't get a launch trailer 10 days out, but you know what? Whatever, because this trailer's awesome. And in the trailer, we see a massive cinematic showing Mario and crew fighting through tons of enemies on their way to Cursa. It does show some spliced gameplay towards the end of the trailer. People seem really pleased with the trailer and the game in general, 10 days out. Many calling it the best Mario spinoff ever or the team up we never knew we needed and others really impressed with the animations and effort in the Just That trailer. I would say in general, while people love gameplay trailers, a more cinematic launch trailer is pretty awesome given that we already have tons of gameplay trailers and footage for this game, so we already know what it is and now it's time to just hype up the launch. And our last story is about an event that happened in Japan over the weekend, really last Friday into the weekend, called Nintendo Live. And at this event that Nintendo was hosting, there was a life-size statue of Link from Tears of the Kingdom, the yet-to-be-released game. Yeah, I kind of feel like this statue would have been at E3 this year if there was an in-person E3, because it really reminds me of some of Nintendo's prior E3 setups. But that being said, it looks incredible. It's highly detailed. Link doesn't have that thing on his hip that he did in the trailer, so we don't really know what that is, maybe because... They don't want the public getting more details on that, so maybe not having it there is by choice. You can see a highly detailed, you know, his arm, it's glowing green, it's doing crazy things. I think this looks awesome and amazing, and I want it, and it probably costs over $100,000, and I don't care. Nintendo, sell it to me now. I will give you half of my soul. The other half is reserved for my kids. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jazz from Nintendo Prime. This is a really awesome episode of Prime 5. I really enjoyed it. Glad to be back doing our regular thing, and we'll catch you in the next video.